Hello everybody, I'm Emily Booth, editor of the Architects Journal, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the Retrofit Awards 2021. These amazing awards are now in their 11th year, and despite the extraordinary challenges of the past 12 months, the projects on show are brimming with innovation, creativity, and spirit. Our many congratulations to the practices behind the winning and shortlisted schemes. It is a privilege to be celebrating with you virtually. Retrofit is an inherently sustainable approach to building. In the face of a climate emergency, we must all prioritise retrofit in our thinking, design and development. The drive towards increased retrofit is gaining pace and putting your voice to our Retro First campaign is bearing fruit. MPs are taking notice and with the UK hosting COP26 in November, there is much to work towards. You can find out more about the campaign at the AJ website and sign up to help enable positive change. You and your exceptional work are making a difference. Now, this evening, celebrating the very best in retrofit projects would not have been possible without the support of our sponsors. So I'd especially like to thank 3M, Amron Architectural, Schluter Systems, Selector Glaze, and Techno. And a big thank you to all of our judges who have given their valuable time and expertise to scrutinize each entry we received. We could not do this without you and your hard work is very much appreciated. Thank you. Just a quick note about social media. If you would like to post your good luck wishes, selfies or photos of your team to Instagram or Twitter, be sure to use the hashtag AJRetrofitAwards. Now, before we move on to the awards, I'm delighted to hand over to AJ Managing Editor, Will Hurst, who will introduce and interview our wonderful guest speakers for this evening. Hello everyone. I'm Will Hurst, Managing Editor of the Architects Journal, and I'm very pleased to have the opportunity this afternoon to discuss one of the most cherished modernist buildings in the UK, St. Peter's Seminary at Cardross in Scotland. The 1967 building, designed by Izzy Metzstein and Andy McMillan of Gillespie, Kidd and Coyer, was sadly closed in 1987 and has lain abandoned ever since, so is sorely in need of regeneration and retrofit. With that in mind, I'm delighted to be joined by the co-founders of a new organisation seeking to do just that, the Kilmahew Education Trust. Ali and Stuart Cotton, an education specialist and former financial investigator respectively, launched the trust last year, and in the summer revealed in the AJ that they're working with Carmody Grawk, and landscape designer Dan Pearson on their plans for a viable vision with education at its core for this Category A listed building. Hello Ali and Stuart, thanks so much for joining us. Hello, Hello Will. Hello everyone. So to get things started, I wanted to ask you how things are progressing with your new design team. Yes, well we are um, rapidly working through uh, stage zero uh, through stage one of the REBA um, criteria. Uh, we're about to set up the design team to move that forward, um, but essentially we've done the site visits during non-COVID lockdown periods. Um, Comedy Grok and uh, Dan Pearson joined us with their teams on site. Um, we've managed to go through the main uh, stratas of what we're trying to achieve with various buildings, not just St Peter's Seminary, we have the castle and the walled garden as well. Um, so yes, progressing nicely. And um it's been lying abandoned for more than 30 years. So what condition is the seminary now in? Um, it's almost skeletal in its um, form at the moment. There's very little of it left. Um, there's, there's the wood panelling and all the internal fittings have gone. You are literally just looking at how it was built. So the, the facade is there but internally it's just the concrete structures that were holding up the different areas and some of the lead, I would imagine, of the roofing of the individual cells. So 
yeah, not that's the... that's pretty much what's left. There's not there isn't. Yeah, it, a... is, it is literally just the skeletal form. Um, we've rescued things. So, so us and previous teams have rescued certain artifacts and elements of architecture, sort of salvage. So we have those all in storage. And a, a big part of what we're trying to do at the moment is work on uh, how we preserve those pieces to give us reference points for future design work. So things like window sockets and um, individual uh, panelling on the exterior windows, all of those kind of profile details are important to us from a conservation perspective. So we have all that in storage and we've a lot more to do. We want to get some volunteers on site to sort of record architectural salvage. Um, there are elements of the convent that we still want to uh, retrieve and put into storage and document. So yeah, apart from those details, it was literally just the concrete as it was poured. And is the concrete frame in a good enough condition, do you think, that you'll be able to reuse most of it? It's, uh, I had several surveys done on it, um, I think by experts in the field, and they are of the mind that the concrete isn't fatigued. It is in good condition. Um, I mean, obviously we have lost some bits of it, so um, we're now looking at how we go forward with that, what, whether we put something in place that's similar to what was there already, or whether we um, juxtapose it with something else like wood or full, metal. Full glazing, full glazing. And just so, literally glazing and uh, all kinds of different uh, window profiles, so on. So yeah, lots, we've just got so many opportunities It's a complete blank canvas of concrete. Um, you know, almost too many options to, yes. to go for, but we, we have a sort of idea as to where we want to go. Um, it's a question of whether that's all feasible when we get down to the design process. And so many have tried to save this building in the past, including, you know, very experienced developers uh, like Urban Splash. What makes you confident that this time will be different, that you, you can actually succeed where so many others have failed? Um, well, I think um, personally, we're looking at this in, in a more holistic, we're taking a more holistic approach to this. So we aren't just focusing on St. Peter's Seminary, which is an enormous building in its own right, um, but it is part of a complex that Izzy Metzstein and Andy McMillan bu um, built. So there is an education block that comes off it and um, a convent building that comes off it as well. Uh, but we're not just focused on their buildings and reusing their buildings. We're also focused on other buildings that have been developed throughout the different histories of the site. So we've got quite a lot of strata to deal with. And um, so we've got a castle, as Stuart mentioned, we've got um, a walled garden. So in a way, we're almost focused on the outside going in, as opposed to what most people have done, which is focus on the Izzy Metzstein area going out. So I think that probably will help us. Yeah. Um, also, if we focus on the smaller aspects, building up to the, the big monolith that is St. Peter's Seminary, we will be able to get probably a, a little bit more backing from people who aren't that keen on it, or you can see that there's going to be progress because we're achieving little bits here and there. So it's that minimal wins that we're, we're hoping for. It's kind forward. of get it started on a small scale to build yes. confidence that yeah. the larger I, vision I can be realized. A series of small victories leading up to you know the largest projects. And I think the other thing that will make us successful is that we are developing an enterprise ecosystem within the estate. So we are looking at a larger visitor attraction for uh, the whole of Kilmahue. Uh, we're looking at the St. Peter's Seminary is one of the most requested film locations, but it's never had the infrastructure to take in the film crews. So we fixed all of those assets. We're open for business as a film location. And it's the enterprise ecosystem and the film industry that will make us less reliant on the grant process and the time it takes to get a grant and so on. We should be able to, so to some extent, self-fund a large part of the renovations, restoration, conservation, archaeology, and so on. What does an enterprise ecosystem mean in this regard? 
It's basically uh, from my background in financial services, I help rescue failed businesses that are part of so-called tax avoidance schemes. So as part of the rescue process, they have to invest in new intellectual property rights, which we've developed over the years. So we came into Kilmahue knowing that there were all these buildings that could be repurposed from which to grow those intellectual property rights and develop businesses. So there is a research and development laboratory. There is a scope for and, and a probability of uh, an alternative investment fund on site using the convent building. So, so startups, essentially. Start startups, incubators, accelerators yeah. and, and uh, venture capital. Yeah. So we're developing our own circular economy, if you will. Um, we're hoping to stand on our own two feet with a fund. We're hoping that the fund will filter information and money down through to the startups. We're hoping that those startups will grow and develop and more people on site. So we're hoping that this sort of circular economy that we're developing, this little ecosystem within Kilmahue, will be one of those markers that makes us different to anybody else that's attempted this that we're we're developing different strategies yeah. different approach to this and, and each of those elements whether it's uh, because we are expecting outside funding as well as uh, government aid uh, it gives us the opportunity to think more about what we're doing and take that time of not applying for grants to take the time to look at conservation architecture and to do those things correctly and to source the right kind of materials. So if we're doing retro first, we want to make sure that the, every single material that we use is capable of having the sort of accreditation we would need to be completely green and circular. And we would know before we even place it into a building, what we're going to repurpose it as after the building is finished. I see. Um, yeah, because I, I was going to ask how, um, you know the idea of circular economy applied to the design and the construction um but it sounds as if this pause i guess you've had um presumably owing to the the pandemic has, yeah. has provided you with some some thinking space and some opportunities in that regard uh, to be fair i think we had most of it already sorted before we even came into the project we've been working on other sites for many years uh, it's education driven. So the whole idea was about finding a walled garden to teach cookery and gardening. It was about finding spaces for enterprise. It was about recovering. Um, mm. The process of recovering a business is not dissimilar, dissimilar to recovering the property and the built assets. So we have the time and the inclination. We've always been organic and so on. So things like a walled garden with a collapsed greenhouse structure it's about the timber that we use is, is what kind of timbers and treatments are available so that if we re rebuild the greenhouses that the timber profiles are correct that the timber that we're using is correct and locally sourced and will last another hundred years or so on so we have the benefit of having had 10 years of looking at mm. materials and my background in taxation in national intelligence was about looking at building projects quite often we did we did all kinds of investigations into materials and uh, construction materials and so on so i have a good background knowledge of supply chains where to access these products we built our, we, we designed our own cottage previously mm. with oak frame and sips panels so it's bringing all of that knowledge over 10 20 years uh, back to this project really and, think, and having this time to do it well i think as well um agreeing with what stuart's just said i think as well um we have had the uh, foundation blocks of what we wanted to do within the, the estate. Um, the pandemic has allowed us to research that in more detail, probably. We've had the time to search and, and research the circular economy and the, and the donut economy. Yeah, uh, and, and, the, and the partnerships that we'll need to bring that together. So, that's the one thing that the pandemic has allowed us to do is just make sure that what we're trying to achieve is a achievable so we've talked to quite a lot of stakeholders about different aspects of what we're hoping to bring in and um just doing research that's what we've done that's what we do that's what this is built on this foundation is built on research education you know just Knowledge transfer. Knowledge transfer, transfer, yeah. 
So in many respects, the vision that you're bringing isn't specific perhaps to Cardross. Is that fair to say? Because you've been developing it over so many years and you've looked at other sites and other possibilities, as you've said. Um, no, it was very much about the, the day that the BBC broke the news um, about more difficulties uh, in the aftermath of um, the, you know, the previous arts group trying to uh, achieve a solution. It was a case of looking at the information, looking at the site, doing a virtual tour, and within minutes, you know, I was on the phone to Ali and saying, I think we found the location. We, we tried three other locations before and through one thing or another, they'd not worked out. We'd worked with a big architecture firm in London uh, on a 240 million euro project, which was new build. So we had all that experience of two years working on a project that was new build and a huge cost. For Can you rainforest. tell us any more about that? Uh, yeah, that was a, a rainforest attraction. So it was essentially along the lines of the Eden project, but taking the Eden project concept um, global. Uh, it was a piece of land in Coromues in Liège. And we worked with an architecture firm on um, both the rainforest, so particularly with Ali's skill, looking at the rainforest attraction and the experiential side of that and the education elements. And I worked with the architects on building out the business model, uh, attaching a 40,000 seat football stadium to that for the local team that played in the Champions League quite frequently, looking at all the media connectivity within that stadium. Um, and the riverside, so the potential for using the river as some source of energy. And how is that influencing what you're doing at Cardross? I mean, if I've understood you correctly, uh, obviously film is, is, is going to be a big part of this, but education is at the core mm. um, of, of many different types, mm. um, along with heritage tourism, presumably, to some extent. Yeah. Um, is there, a, is that, is that, um, a good summary or are there other elements to, to what there's you far, envisage? There's far more elements. So it's, it's the entire animation industry. So we're, we're, we're part of the process is in 10 years time, we want to have an animation business there, which is competing with the Ardmans in the UK, the Pixar's in the United States, um, the data center that we're building, the render farm uh, in the Undercroft is state of the art. It exceeds Pixar's capacity for um, uh, sort of running the computer systems and rendering the animation. Um, the enterprise ecosystem will support more than 200 uh, projects, business projects. Um, and then on top of all of that, it's all the things we work with the Soil Association. So things like how you get children to understand the science of soil, uh, how you get children to understand kinetics. So using the two burns that we have to do kinetic energy and how we get kids growing and cooking uh, and having all the facilities on site is rather than just showing them how to grow and show them how to cook is that we then allow them to make programs of their own. So they're developing film schemes. We have a film industry that's growing rapidly in the UK and we have no skill set at the moment. We, we have nobody to fill that double digit growth. So if children are learning the skills of making films and content, you know, that we, we want to do all of those things. Um, as Comenius, who was a, a very wise person way back when, can't remember exactly, um, said, you learn by immersion, you learn by actually doing the thing. So that is fundamentally what we're about. We're about immersing people in ecology, history, all those different stratas that we want to um, educate people about, we're about immersing them in it. So for example, the film studios, we want children to be able to take part in that. We want children to be able to understand through maybe just something like cooking, that they can be a director, they can be somebody who's presenting. Just, you know, it, it, it is literally, you're baking a cake, but somebody stood there filming you, somebody's directing it and saying, oh, you know, can you just wipe that chocolate off your face or whatever. It's, it's that thing of just immersing people within whatever it is you're trying to and, teach. And from it's, it's, sorry, from an architectural perspective, uh, it's that ability to show all the architectural um, interactions that have gone on in Kilmahue Estate. So pre the castle, we, we've got elements that we think we can bring to the table from before the castle was built. So 1540 is the earliest built element we have, but being able to take an architecture student through a very strange castle with various 
different features and at least three different uh, designers of it, through to the Georgian elements, the Victorian elements of the Burns family, the Brutalist elements, and then the enabling development that we've got, which is involving very futuristic buildings and cutting edge architecture, um, is putting those on site so that students can see where the future lies. So although those are new build, they're not retro first, they are showcasing uh, green materials, circular economy materials and so on. So it's, it's building that into the structures and all of those things help pay for the, the ideal. Well, it's incredibly interesting and um, our time together has actually gone in a flash because uh, it's just about up. Um, so I just wanted to thank you both very much for joining us um, this afternoon and, um, you know, do keep us posted on, on how your plans progress. Yes, we will do. Thank you very much, Will. Thanks and, for having us. Um, can we say congratulations to the um, people who are entered into this and congratulations to the winners. Mm -hmm. uh, good luck to all the participants as well. Thanks. Cheers. And thank you very much to Ali and Stuart Cotton. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Bye. Thank you, Stuart and Ali, for your insight into such a compelling retrofit project. Now it's time to find out who will be a winner of an AJ Retrofit Award for 2021. We have 16 winners to honour, and in some cases, a high commendation. You will be able to find out more detail about each of the winners in the special awards issue of the AJ, which will be with subscribers tomorrow. So everyone, let's get on with the main event, the AJ Retrofit Awards 2021. We kick things off this afternoon with cultural and religious buildings under £5 million category. And the shortlist is... Watt Institution by Collective Architecture. Hornsey Library by Carl Latourelle Head Architecture. Grand Junction at St Mary Magdalene's Paddington by Dow Jones Architects. Science Museum Smith Centre by Hat Projects. Gerloch Museum by LDN. Clan Carty Lodge and Sands End Arts and Community Centre by May. Aras Yui Chongail, the James Connolly Visitor Centre by McGurk Architects. And Surrey Docks Farm by Pup Architects. The judges said our winner has an impressively coherent scheme, which was communicated very clearly and which reinvents the building. Its design exhibits a modesty and a consistency of approach at all scales from its riverside context down to the detailing of its cladding. And our winner is Pup Architects with Surrey Docks Farm. Hi everybody, we're super happy to be winners of one of the AJ Retrofit Awards. It means a huge amount to a small practice like ours and it's really positive to see retrofit projects being recognised in this way. Uh, congratulations to all of the other winners and we're really sorry we can't all be there to celebrate together. Up next is the Cultural and Religious Buildings £5 million and over category. The shortlist is as follows. Fairfield Halls by Micah Architects Edinburgh Printmakers by Paige Park St George's Bristol by Patel Taylor Crescent Kernow by Purcell and The Malt House, The King's School Canterbury by Tim Ronalds Architects the judges said the winner is architecturally very satisfying and inventive with a freshness of approach which sensitively retains the character of the existing building. And our winner is The Malt House, The King's School Canterbury by Tim Ronalds Architects. At Tim Ronalds Architects, we're absolutely thrilled to receive this award for the Malt House Theatre. The Malt House is a handsome Victorian industrial building which had suffered many unsympathetic alterations over the years and had sadly fallen into disrepair. Thanks to an imaginative and ambitious client, the King's School Canterbury, 
the building has now been given a new lease of life. This was a fantastic project to work on, and I'd like to thank the AJ Retrofit Awards judges for recognising the hard work of the whole team in granting us this award. Thank you. We're now pleased to welcome this short video from our sponsor of the hotel, retail and leisure category, Schluter Systems. Now on to the shortlist. Juicy Street Warehouse by Archer Humphreys Architects. Eccleston Yards by Buckley Gray Yeoman. Goodwood Aerodrome Building by Design Engine Architects. Bromley Picture House by Earl Architects. The Standard London by Orms, Sean Hausman Design and Archer Humphreys Architects. And Catford Muse by Wren Architecture and Design. We have a highly commended for this category. Congratulations to Wren Architecture and Design for Catford Muse. Now on to our winner. The judges agreed this project has done a remarkable job in saving a great building from demolition, adding a welcome playfulness to the facade with its new three-storey crown successfully responding to the existing building. And our winner is The Standard London by Orms, Sean Hausman Design and Archer Humphreys Architects. On behalf of the whole project team, I'd like to thank the AJ and the Retrofit Award judges for recognising the Standard London. It's been a truly collaborative project and I'd like to thank Cross Tree Real Estate Partners, the Standard and their interior designers, Sean Hausman Design and Archer Humphreys. I'd also like to thank Ian Chalk uh, for his time on the project when he was at Orms. Finally, as we meet the demands of the climate emergency, it's great to see the judges recognising that retrofit can be cool. Thank you. Health is our next category and the shortlist looks like this. Ada Belfield Centre and Belfer Library by Glancy Nichols Architects. One Welbeck Phase 1 and 2 by Marek Wojciechowski Architects. St Paul's Lodge, Winchester. Orthodontic Clinic by Miltia Du Cook Mitzman Architects and Evelina Level 6 Sky and Level 1 Arctic by Sonoman Toon Architects. 
Our winner was commended for working well with the strong qualities of the existing buildings, creating impressive double height interior spaces. It's a great example of a local authority client co-locating facilities and bringing some lovely old buildings back into use. And our winner is Ada Belfield Centre and Belfer Library by Glancy Nichols Architects. Glancy Nichols Architects are delighted to accept this award for the Ada Belfield Centre and Library. It really was a labour of love for everyone involved. It's especially reassuring to see a building of this type being recognised in the Retrofit Awards and it proves that quality care environments can be compatible with a sustainable retrofit approach. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Derbyshire County Council, especially Liz Eubank and Jean Sturman, who've shown such a strong commitment to providing quality care and inspirational environments to elderly residents. Thank you very much. On to our next category, which is school, and the shortlist is... Waterloo Hall, South Hampstead High School by Broadway Mallion. Fenny's Wimbledon by CF Architects. Forest Gate Community School Expansion by Rivington Street Studio. And Hackney School of Food by Sermon Weston. The judges agreed this was a standout winner, a scheme full of a sense of fun and joy refreshingly simple and modest while making brave, bold architectural moves. An amazing amount has been achieved on a tight budget. And our winner is Hackney School of Food by Salmon Weston. Hi there, uh, it's Tom Sermon here from Sermon Weston. I just wanted to say thanks so much for this award. Uh, we really loved working on this project. Uh, we had a fantastic contractor, structured engineer, client team. It really was one of those dream projects to work on. So thanks to the AJ for recognising uh, this project in the school's category for the Retrofit Awards. It really means a lot to us. Thanks. We're now pleased to welcome this short video from our sponsor of the Higher and Further Education category, Technol. Imagination is a gift. It enables you to dream, to fly, to reach new places, anticipate what will happen. Those who spend their time imagining are the ones who change things. They create, they inspire, they challenge. They move ahead and lead the way. Imagination moves the world. At Technal, we move with it. It's a way of doing things. That's why where others see only doors and windows, we see new possibilities. We see creativity and design at the service of people. We see what is to come, a way of thinking that has brought us here. We are a company that has grown, always looking to the future. Today, we are innovators. Tomorrow will be everything our imaginations can conceive. Techna, imagine what's next. Now on to the shortlist. Student Services Centre, University of Cambridge by Bennett's Associates. Bath School of Art and Design by Grimshaw. Kingston School of Art by Hayworth Tompkins. Lara Trait Sixth Form Study Centre, the AIR Centre by Lusher Architects. University of Reading Library by Stride Treglown. And the Fry Building, University of Bristol by Wilkinson Eyre. The judges said the winner demonstrates a lovely juxtaposition between existing and new and successfully preserves a unique atmosphere in response to a dream brief. This scheme truly embodies what these awards are celebrating. And our winner is... Kingston School of Art by Hayworth Tompkins. I am delighted to accept this award on behalf of Howard Tompkins, Kingston University and the project team. Universities have a major task on their hands to retrofit their existing buildings as they embark on the decarbonisation of their estates. 
We hope this award shines a light on how everyday buildings such as this can be transformed, not through demolition and replacement, but through tactful enhancement and retooling, so that they meet the highest standards of environmental performance and better meet the needs of building users for years to come. Award 7. Workplace under 2,000 metres squared. We're now pleased to welcome this short video from our sponsor of the Workplace under 2,000 square metres category, Amron Architectural. Now, on to the shortlist. The Studio, Erdley House by 23 Plus GS 318. Alva Coachworks by Ackroyd Lowry. Music Agency by Beasley Dixon Architects. Yorkton Workshops by Cassian Castle Architects with Pearson Lloyd. Argyle Workshop and Creative Studios by Gluckman Smith Architects. Faithly Center by Moxon Architects. And The Hub, Wire Forest District Council Kidderminster by Schlolanda de Cruz Architects. We have our second highly commended for these awards. Congratulations to Ackroyd Lowry for Alva Coachworks. Now on to our winner, and the judges praise this as proper retrofit. Anyone else would have pulled the building down. They applaud the real bravery shown in how its design celebrates the mishmash of old and new. And our winner is Yorkton Workshops by Cassian Castle Architects with Pearson Lloyd. Hi, this is Cassian Castle. Thank you so much for this award. We're thrilled to bits. Thanks to everyone who was involved, including David in the office, Gitanis on site, Structure Workshop, and in particular to the clients and co-designers, Tom and Luke. It was a really special project to work on. Hi, my name's Tom Lloyd from Pearson Lloyd. Thank you for this amazing award. We're really thrilled and surprised to receive it. The process of bringing back to life a series of old Hackney workshops over the last two years has been both stressful and highly enjoyable. Working with Cassian Castle and his team has been a great creative collaboration and we're delighted with the result. We're halfway through the awards with the Workplace 2000 to 10,000 square metres category and the shortlist is Dept W by Buckley Gray Yeoman. Hilton House by Buttress. The Hickman Whitechapel by DSDHA. Windmill Green by TP Bennett with Four Partnership. Wellington House by Matt Architecture. The Works by NBBJ. And 47 to 69 Notting Hill Gate by Squire and Partners. The judges said that this is an unbelievable transformation, resulting in a retrofit for the long term and a project commended for its great community engagement and feedback. And our winner is Wellington House by Matt Architecture. Hello everybody, it's nice to meet you all, which is why I'm outside, obviously, safety first, dip, dip, dip. Um, we're thrilled to win this award, we're thrilled for ourselves, we're thrilled for our client, for the design team, for the contracting team, all have done a fantastic job. We're also thrilled that the award exists and that we're now able to uh, not just demonstrate but celebrate that one can really embed the principles of the circular economy into design with these kind of regenerations that work economically and aesthetically. So thank you very much. 
Our last workplace category is workplace over 10,000 square meters and the shortlist is as follows. WPP Amstel Dock by BDG Architecture and Design. WPP La Matrice also by BDG Architecture and Design. 22 Warple Road by Buckley Gray Yeoman. 77 Coleman, also by Buckley Gray Yeoman. Three Shortlands, Phase One, by Fletcher Priest Architects. And 160 Old Street, by Orms. Our judges were unanimous in their decision on the winner of this category, saying that they have truly embraced retrofit, built upon and improved the original composition creatively reusing the structure while preserving evidence of the original. And our winner is 160 Old Street by Orms. Thank you very much for this award. It's fantastic that 160 Old Street has won the category for a workplace over 10,000 square metres. It's a building we're very proud of. Um, and a project that really exemplifies our approach as a practice to retaining and working with the existing buildings. Uh, we were really lucky to work with a brilliant team on this project, including our client, Great Portland Estates. Uh, the whole team at Orms is delighted to have won. Thank you. Our 10th award for today is the listed building under £10 million category, and the shortlist is Worcester Cathedral Undercroft Learning Centre by Acanthus Clues Architects King's Willow House by Graham Handley Architects The BIS Whitby Street Studios Hartlepool by Group Ginger and Bell Size Fire Station by Tate Harmer We have another highly commended for this category Congratulations to Graham Handley Architects for King's Willow House Now on to our winner. The judges loved the simplicity of what the architects have done here. The changes don't affect the character of the building with very few services added and the project is extremely well executed and pure. Our winner is Worcester Cathedral Undercroft Learning Centre by Acanthus Clues Architects. I've just received the fantastic news that we've been awarded the under 10 million listed buildings AJ Retrofit Award and we are absolutely thrilled. I'm here in the Undercroft today and I just can't wait to share this space. It's been a really long journey and we want to thank everybody who's been on that journey. Worcester Cathedral and all the team here, the funders, the National Lottery Heritage Fund um, and everybody who supported us getting this permission and to deliver this project. It's a fantastic space and I hope you all enjoy it. We're now pleased to welcome this short video from our sponsor of the listed building 10 million pounds and over category, Select a Glaze. Hello, my name is Meredith Johnstone and I am chairman of Select a Glaze. We are very proud to be sponsoring an AJ award again, this time for the category of listed building 10 million pounds and over. Buildings are listed when there is recognition of their historical importance, both socially and architecturally, and of course, they don't necessarily have to be an old building. Fine design has always been, and always will be, a human triumph. At Select Glaze, we are particularly passionate about how these buildings are sustainably conserved and repurposed to meet the changing needs and the well-being of those who use them. They can also anchor communities, provide historical context, and give people pride in their towns and cities. We recognise the enormous talent and dedication of the design professionals who enable these often very complex projects. We wish good luck to those nominated today and offer our congratulations to the eventual winner. Thank you. Now on to the shortlist. 1 Finsbury Avenue by Alford Hall Monaghan Morris. The Plumstead Centre by Hawkins Brown. Bracken House by John Robertson Architects. 
and Lincoln's Inn Great Hall and Library by Micah Architects. The judges love the simplicity of the winning intervention and how this is a project with long-term investment in mind, creating a sustainable future for a listed building that doesn't detract from the spirit of it. And our winner is Lincoln's Inn Great Hall and Library by Micah Architects. Well, thank you so much for this award for our project at Lincoln's Inn. It's a real tribute to the skill and dedication shown by our project team to work with and adapt the existing building. Uh, it was a really unique opportunity to work with the Grade 2 star listed Great Hall and Library um, to, to not only bring it back to its original character, but also to add new space um, for the Inn and the Inn's education team. Uh, also for us as an office, uh, it's a real uh, tribute to our work, ongoing work, um, with existing buildings to repurpose and reduce energy, which we believe is so important to our industry. Once again, thank you so much. It means a lot to us, this award. Housing is our next category and the shortlist is The Officer's House, Royal Arsenal by Alford Hall, Monaghan Morris. Bell Street Stables, Glasgow by Collective Architecture. Woodside Multi-Storey Flats, Glasgow by Collective Architecture. Murray's Mills, Manchester by Field & Clegg Bradley Studios. Sproust & Muse, Forest Gate by Matheson Whiteley. And Beaumont Gardens, St Albans by John Pardy Architects and Saunders. The winner is a powerful and instructive model of how to approach retrofitting and recladding a tower block holistically, built on impressive consultation with residents. Technically, it is to be commended and has been achieved on an impressively tight budget of just over £40,000 per flat. And our winner is Woodside Multi-Storey Flats Glasgow by Collective Architecture. Hi everyone, I am honoured to accept this award on behalf of everyone involved in the project, especially given the impressive design quality of others shortlisted. I'd particularly like to thank Queen's Cross Housing Association as client and the Woodside Community Involvement Group for their commitment to social sustainability in establishing an aspirational brief. I'd also like to thank the main contractor Engie who with the support of residents have managed to complete the works in and around their homes to help mitigate fuel poverty. We hope the recognition that this project is receiving will help promote the methodology and practicality of low energy deep retrofit design and hope it encourages others to do the same, if not better, on our collective journey to net zero. Thank you. Our next category is the house under £250,000 and the shortlist is Gatti House by Adam Nib Architects The Linney by Caswell Bank Architects The Hall by Paper House Project Lockkeeper's Cottage by Sanchez Benton Architects Haringey Glazed Extension by Satish Dassel Architects and Ex Council House Transformation by Vatra. The judges said the winning project is wonderful, a great articulation of retrofit principles. Beautiful and sensitive use of materials make for a very thoughtful architectural intervention. And our winner is The Linney by Caswell Bank Architects. Hi, I'm delighted to accept this award on behalf of everyone at Caswell Bank Architects. It's encouraging to get the recognition, so a big thank you to the AJ and the judges. I'd also like to congratulate Kevin Jenkinson and his team on building the project with such care and commitment, and to David Randorge for recording the building so sensitively through his photographs and words. Of course, without Jojo and Stephen, our clients, and their courage to take on such an intriguing and characterful little building, this project wouldn't exist. 
we look forward to seeing the productive garden that they're planting around the Linnea mature over time. Thank you very much. Up next is house, £250,000 to £500,000. And the shortlist is... House Within a House by Alma Knack. Lime House by Cox Architects. 15 Shepherd's Hill by Inglis Badrashi Lodo. Hannington Road by Matthew Giles Architects. Samok and by Napier Clark Architects. And 910 Stock Orchard Street by Sarah Wigglesworth Architects. We have a highly commended for this category. Congratulations, Sarah Wigglesworth Architects for 9 to 10 Stock Orchard Street. Now, on to our winner. The judges said this project is an exemplar model that is replicable, creative and done beautifully and with wit. A very polished submission with a thorough range of data provided. And our winner is... House Within a House by Alma Knack. On behalf of Amnac, thank you so much for this award. It's great to be recognised alongside so many other fantastic projects and practices. As with all our projects, this was a collaborative one, so a big thanks to the client who was integrally involved in both the design process and on site, to the consultant team and of course to our project team. Getting this recognition really spurs us on to continue to invest the same level of energy and enthusiasm to our projects, so thank you again. Now, on to our penultimate award, the house over £500,000 category. And the shortlist is... Dairy Row by Haverstock. Cornish Cottage by Jonathan Tucky Design. Fresh and Green by Sanya Polskuk Architects. And The Water Tower by Tonkin Yu. Our winner is a gutsy and powerful project, really well executed, thoroughly engaging and with an inventive and impressive use of CLT, particularly in its stunning cantilevered stair. And our winner is The Water Tower by Tonkin Liu. Hi, I'm Anna Liu from Tonkin Liu. We just heard the great news from AJ Retrofit Awards. Hi, I'm Mike Tonkin from Tonkin Liu. And it seems like many years ago that our old friend Dennis asked us to look at a water tower in Castle Acre. And um, it's been quite an incredible project. And he would probably be much happier if we won the under 500,000 pounds of water, but we won the over. But he has done something amazing for the village. He's managed to use the whole of the village of Castle Acre and all their enthusiasm for the field, the most amazing project. Dennis. Amazing project, amazing architects actually. Thank you very much. It's an amazing home and amazing place to be. Really, thank you. Well, thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. Now, onto our last category for the awards, the Retrofit of the Year Award. We're now pleased to welcome this short video from our sponsor for this category, 3M.
Now, on to our winner for Retrofit of the Year Award. Our winner is a project that isn't just sustainable in its saving of embodied carbon through retention and reuse, but it's also notable in how it has reworked previously nondescript buildings into a rather poetic and beautiful whole, ensuring their long-term future and showing what can be achieved through thought, attention to detail and true collaboration. It is replicable and demonstrates the bravery of both the architect and client in not only preserving an unremarkable set of buildings that wouldn't usually be saved from demolition, but creatively remaking them afresh, providing a great example of the power of retrofit. And our winner is Yorkton Workshops by Cassian Castle Architects with Pearson Lloyd. Hi, this is Cassian Castle. It's such an honour to have won this award. Thanks again to everyone, especially Pearson Lloyd for showing such commitment to design throughout. We've always enjoyed working on retrofit projects and it's great that retrofit is now being recognised in the way it deserves. Long may it continue. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Luke Pearson from Pearson Lloyd. We're delighted to have won this award with Cass. Um, it's been a long journey. We bought the building four years ago and we paid a lot of attention to the concept, the design and the detail. And hopefully this award will um, in many ways represent a lot, a lot of the values that we try and imbue and put into our design. So thank you. Congratulations to all of our winners tonight and a huge Thank you to our judges and our sponsors. Without your support, these awards would not be possible. On behalf of the AJ editorial and awards teams, thank you for celebrating with us.